G'day viewers, welcome to this week's PB's Retro Restorations. This week I'm doing this number 233 Dinky Cooper Bristol Racing Car, which was available singly. It was also available in a five pack gift set, uh, which I've got thanks to my Uncle Philip. Uh, but this one again belongs to my father-in-law Paul, he's trusted me again. <laughs> um, this is a fairly simple model, it looks like it might have had a, some fire damage or heat damage to it at some stage. Might explain why it's got no tyres, uh, that's really its only issue, the paint and the tyres. So let's get started on it and maybe we can get it back to its former racing glory. Now here's some of the usual stuff sent punching the rivets so I can get some purchase on them with the drill, drill them out and I will usually have to finish them off with the Dremel to get them uh, completely free of the base and then it will come apart. Now this body's all cast in one piece, driver, pipes, everything, apart from the base and wheels of course. And some of the nooks and crannies could be quite a uh, challenge to get into, especially in the cockpit around the driver, but I did. I should invest in one of those uh, brass wire brushes I've seen some of the other guys use. I will as soon as I find one. Uh, but I got it all cleaned up and uh, ready for primer and paint. So once I got all the wheels cleaned up with the Dremel, I used some cocktail sticks or toothpicks as I would call them because uh, they're excellent for getting splinters of wood stuck into your gums. Uh, stick the wheels on there and that'll make them easy to paint. Now I edited some number sixes to look as close to the originals as I could with my skills. I printed them out in some sticky label paper and then I stuck those labels onto some Tamiya tape. And then I carefully cut them out with my X-Acto knife or hobby knife, whatever you want to call it. So I'd give myself some number sixes that would uh, I could stick onto the body and then peel off afterwards. So as you can see, I've already painted the body white. And my idea here with the sixes is to create a mask for the numbers. Now I'll also mask off the driver who's supposed to be white as well. And then I'll spray the whole thing green and with any luck I'll be able to pull off the sixes and pull off the masking of the driver. They'll both be white, the car will be British Racing green and everyone will be happy. So let's see how that goes. With the driver I cover the bulk of him up with uh, Tamiya tape and then for the rounded parts like around the actual cockpit I roll out some blue tack and I just smooth it around the gap between the tape and where I want the line to stop just to stop the paint and that will hopefully give us a even round shape he'll still be white and everything will be good. Now while the paint dries, I forgot to film myself painting it, here's the ultimate white knuckle thrill ride of me cleaning the axles, or axle, I'm not going to punish you with both of them, but you just put it in my drill, get a bit of sandpaper, spin it around, and that does a pretty good job. I did straighten them out as well, they were a little bit bent, I used my pliers and just finoodled them about a bit, and they look good. So here's the moment of truth, well not really because I already pulled one of them off, but I was quite pleased to find that voila, the technique worked even if I hadn't quite cut those sixes as neatly as I could. I did sand them down a little bit to try and clean them up a bit, but overall I was pleased with it. Um, they could have been so much neater. What I was really pleased with was how neatly the driver came out with the blue tack. It worked good just need to develop it a little bit more. 
so it's time to put it back together and uh, that's the time I realized I haven't tapped the holes now you might be asking yourself PB why don't you tap the holes and put the threads in before you paint it and the answer to that's quite simple it's because I'm simple and it's one thing I always forget I just something wrong with my brain when it comes to tapping and threading I don't know what it is but anyway here I am doing it Okay, so he's all back together. All he needs is some fresh rubber, man, and some silver detailing on his uh, exhaust pipes and the grill, and we'll be all set to go. And with the new tyres on, we are done. So here we are back at the start with our Dinky Cooper Bristol. It's been the victim of a thermal event. That's fire to you and me. Or some kind of damage, I'm, I'm not sure what. But again, it's all here. It just needs some new paint and some tyres. It's as easy as that, isn't it everybody? Anyway. This is what we started with, and this is what we're left with now. Now the first thing you'll notice is that the sixes are too big, and they're very rough around the edges. But I had a go, and I'm not too sad about them. I hope Paul likes them. Now apart from that, everything else has been a pretty good result, I think. Uh, the green is too dark. I know it, the originals are a little bit lighter than this, but it is a true British racing green. Uh, the guy came out great. I think that's one of the real wins here. And the tyres set it right off. Um, overall, I'm pleased with the result. It's not 100% accurate, factory original, but it'll look good on Paul's shelf. If you've liked watching this video, why not give it a thumbs up? Uh, I'd love to hear your feedback. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Uh, click on one of these links here if you'd like to watch some of my other videos if I haven't bored you yet. And if you haven't subscribed yet, 
please do. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Just click on my bald head there and uh, you can be swept away to a world of PB magic every week. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next Friday. Bye!